Hello friends, welcome to Tilted Planet. This is Sangeeta and as promised, I am back with another episode on the untold story of India's partition in the shadow of the great game. But first, what was the great game? It was a cold war between Russia and Britain that began in 1830. This undeclared conflict shaped the lives of millions of people living in Central and South Asia. Unfortunately, many people from these regions have never heard of the Great Game. This is because it was an undeclared conflict that only came to light when the documents were declassified much later from both sides. Historians were then able to compare British accounts with Russian accounts to verify the authenticity. By the time books were written on this topic, the world was reeling with the next round of the same conflict. So not many people paid attention to it. Please read about the great game as it was the second most consequential event affecting South Asia after the British Raj itself. At the beginning of the great game, the Russian frontier was here. And in the next hundred years, it had moved here. Russia grabbed all this land in its effort to create the Russian Empire. Russian goals were manifold. First, they wanted to engage the British away from their own borders. Second, they aimed to move their frontier as close to India as possible. And thirdly, if possible, they wanted to colonize India by driving the British out. This was a tall order indeed, but definitely a stretch goal for the Russians. Moving on to India now. If you look at the partition from India's point of view, it absolutely does not make sense geographically, historically or demographically. First, although a minority, Muslims had ruled much of India for many centuries before the British even arrived. So the idea that Muslims whose ancestors either willingly came to India or whose Hindu ancestors converted to Islam suddenly didn't want to live with Hindus is inconceivable. And on the top of that, the thought that their rights need to be protected is equally perplexing. Secondly, if the Muslims needed protection from the Hindus, what about the many Muslims who were left inside India after the partition? Looking at partition from Pakistan's point of view, the partition still doesn't make sense. With part of the country on the east and part on the west, divided by a whole subcontinent, it was never going to be a viable country. The separation of Bangladesh from Pakistan eventually proved that regional identities are more important than religious identities, particularly so in India. The British ruled India for over a hundred years and knew this, but didn't care. So, why was the partition necessary and why is the border where it is? Now let us look at it from the British point of view. The Russian frontier just to the other side of Afghanistan. The oil wells in the Middle East required control over the Persian Gulf. Port Karachi became strategically important. This explains the partition on the West. As explained in the previous episode, the British thought creating a Muslim nation will help improve their image in the Muslim countries 
of the Middle East, whose oil was strategically important. The big war against Germany and Japan needed resources and manpower to fight. If it was possible, the British would never leave. But as Attali, the then British Prime Minister, frankly admits in his autobiography that Britain could not hold on to India because of American pressure against the empire. This was a surprise to me. The US had more hand in freeing India than I was willing to admit. Congress, the Indian National Congress, rightfully so, refused to cooperate with the British war efforts. In 1941, 15,000 Congress leaders were in British jail to quash their peaceful freedom struggle. This ensured the army recruitment continued. The strength of British Indian Army rose from 190,000 or 1,90,000 at the beginning of the war to almost 2 million or 20 lakhs by the end of the war. Jinnah had understood the current and future military needs of the empire and he promised a military cooperation in exchange for creation of Pakistan. Other front of the big war came from the east with Japan advancing towards Singapore and then towards Burma. Another surprise, China attacked by Japan was very interested in Indian independence. General Chiang Kai-shek had wired Roosevelt on February 25, 1942 that after his visit to India, if the British government does not fundamentally change its policy towards India, it would be like presenting India to the enemy. If the Japanese should know about the real situation in India, they would be virtually unopposed. So this explains the border on the east side. Let us also talk about Kashmir. You look at this map and see why Gilgit was strategically important from the British point of view. Only a narrow strip of Afghan territory separated it from Soviet Union. And so the border is where it is, not because the Muslims wanted it or the Hindus wanted it, but because the British wanted it. It was Attali's well thought out plan to partition the India and blame Indians for it. Jinnah did not represent Indian Muslims. He was in a minority even within the Muslim League as late as 1940. There was a serious opposition to partition even within Muslim League. Sikandar Hayat Khan and Fazl ul Haq, Muslim League premiers of Punjab and West Bengal respectively were opposed to the concept of a Muslim nation. Sikandar Hayat Khan called it Jinnastan. But Jinnah was used as a puppet by the British to advance their agenda. One million, that is 10 lakh, people died in the aftermath of partition. Thus, Pakistan was born with Jinnah's promise of military cooperation with the British. The country had to pay the price for its existence in the coming decades. As was planned, in the second round of the same great game, this time it was called the Cold War. Afghanistan and Pakistan were drawn into yet another war against Russia. If you look at the map of Asia, you will find similar stories. Israel and Palestine, North Korea and South Korea, families divided, 
land divided brothers hate brothers regional divide used to appropriate resources and land and manpower to outsource the wars of empirical powers these previously colonized countries need to wake up and reunite the third round of the same conflict has begun again in ukraine let us not get drawn into yet another conflict played by the same empirical powers it is difficult to summarize a 400 or so page volume in such a short time so please pick up a copy and read the book yourself also if you ask more questions in the comments it will help me to understand what the viewers want to know more about this topic and i might make another episode based on that so please do comment subscribe and like and share my video thank you for watching